please, brother, bring some styling up in here. I don't even know how you be living with it all messed up like that and ugly and cords everywhere. Man, you need some something. Yeah. Hey guys, Periodic Insanity here with a little easy mod that you can do yourself to make your new PC or your old PC look a lot better by sleeving some fan wires. So we're gonna look at that and you know we're gonna try to get some style into your PC and we're gonna show you a couple things to do. It's a really cheap mod and I think you guys are gonna like it. So let's go over a couple of things that you'll need when you start this project, okay? You'll need some scissors, another cutting tool, I've got a razor and I've got a knife. These are great to have around. I mentioned these in another video. These are iFixit ESD safe tweezers. You're going to need a lighter or some kind of heat source like a heat gun or maybe your girlfriend's uh, hair dryer will work too. Now another thing you should consider picking up, especially if you're going to plan on learning to do your entire power supply, we're just going to do fans in this video, but your entire power supply, you want to pick up this, I believe it's made by Sunbeam Tech, and it's a kit of tools for removing the pins to all the power and molex and everything so that you can get your sleeving on those cables and make them look good. You're going to want a measuring tape or a ruler or something to be able to measure out all your cords and your paracord to be able to cut them. The last two items you're going to need is your heat shrink and your paracord. You can pick this paracord up. Uh, there's so many different colors guys. You can get whatever you want pretty much. You can pick this up. It's like seven, eight bucks maybe for a hundred feet so it'll last you a while. And this heat shrink, which is, I believe, five millimeter, two to one, which means it shrinks to half its size. It's not exactly a requirement, but for people who are trying to do it the easy way, and as long as it doesn't clash with your color scheme, this makes it a lot easier to do. In this video, I'm going to show you guys a couple different attempts that I had at it. My first attempt was just horrible, and my second attempt was a lot better once I got heat shrink. I tried to do it without heat shrink, and it's so much simpler. Now, depending on what kind of fan you're doing, this is a process that can take up to 20 minutes per fan. It's not very difficult, but it is time-consuming just getting the cable through the sleeves. Sometimes with the uh, complicated cables that I got on these Arctic fans, for regular three or four pin fans that don't have any added connectors, it'll be a lot easier. So let's get to seeing my failures and seeing my success and I'll let you guys in on what's going on here. This is my first attempt to try and sleeve a fan in which I didn't use heat shrink and tried to instead melt the paracord onto the wire and I didn't even use any measuring tool to measure the paracord out so you can see it looks pretty bad but it was my first attempt when I was just learning how to do it, how to get the connectors off, etc. And now here you can see my attempt when I used heat shrink and measured everything, kind of a before and after, and you can see it looks way better. It looks like it could have easily come factory packaged that way. And here are the fans that I selected for the tutorial. Between them there are four total connectors, which means that this guide should cover the majority of the fans that you can buy today. We'll start off with this deep cool fan, which has a Molex connector and a 3-pin fan connector. The first thing you should do before taking anything apart is to sketch a quick diagram of where all the wires are so that you can remember. If your wires are all the same color, you can use electrical tape and just mark them that way. Now we're going to take apart the 3-pin fan connector. Up on your screen is a picture of this connector without any wires in it. The three rectangular holes facing the camera are where the wire connectors poke out their little pins to keep the wire from falling out. And this next picture is of an individual wire with its connector. The pin that I was talking about in the previous photo is sticking out on the bottom of the connector. If you ever need to head back to reference these photos, there will be a link in the description that sends you straight back to this point in the video. Now to remove these wires, you're going to want to push down on the pin while pushing in on the wire so that the pin doesn't rest on the plastic and goes down. If you're lucky, this tool that I use first will work for you and all of them will come out at once, however you may end up having to do them all individually, which is what I did here. It may require a little bit of force, but you don't want to use too much as to smash down the connectors or to pull the wire right out of the connector. Now moving on to the Molex connector. Now on your screen is an individual wire with its connector. The top right part is the end that we have to use our tool on to get it out of the Molex piece. You can see both ends have pins in them, but you shouldn't have to manipulate the bottom left end at all. Now this is what the inside of the Molex piece looks like. 
The bottom left end that I was talking about in the previous photo is what you're seeing, so you should be able to understand that it can pull right out if not for the other end of the connector. And on top of the Molex piece sits a little hinged plastic door, which should be pretty easy to remove and put back in place as long as you don't break it by putting too much force on it, which I'll show you right now in the video as I pop this end right up. You can see it kind of sticks on there still, and with a little force you should be able to maneuver the plastic tabs out of the connector. Now for the actual wire pieces, you're going to want to use this tool here, otherwise some people have mentioned using a pen if this tool that came in the pack is not available. You're going to want to use your tool on the covered part of the Molex piece to maneuver those pins that we saw in the picture, and you should hear a little click and then it should pull right out. Now with all the connectors removed, you're going to want to measure your wire. I typically measure all the way from the edge of the fan down to the metal parts of each connector. A good thing to remember is that you can always chop some off, but having it short is really going to suck. Now for these fans with an extra connector coming off of the standard fan connectors, you're going to have to measure an additional smaller piece, which I usually do end up measuring a little bit shorter, maybe a one millimeter shorter than metal to metal. That's from the fan connector to the extra connector. Now I usually write my measurements down, and then we can move on to measuring and cutting the paracord. You want to make sure that you use a nice clean cut either with scissors or whatever other cutting tool you have so that you don't fray the edges. And then you can finally remove the white part from the inside of your sleeving. Now before you get to inserting any cables into the paracord, you may want to consider melting the edges of the paracord so that it doesn't fray while you're maneuvering things through it. I also like to give it a couple taps to open it up a little bit so that you don't have a super small opening to put things through. You will also want to grab some electrical tape to put on the ends of the Molex connectors, right where the pins are, so that it doesn't get caught in the paracord. And when you're finally done doing all that, you can start by putting the Molex connectors that you just taped up into the paracord first, one by one, and then start to put the smaller pin connectors in one by one, so that they're staggered and don't bunch up inside of the paracord, making it easier to cinch them through. If you don't have an additional connector, you can move on to the next step, which is heat shrink, and if you do have an additional connector, you're going to use that small piece of paracord and cinch your extra connector pieces through it. Now moving on to the heat shrinking. Here I'm using 5mm heat shrink. You're going to want one piece for each end of the wire. So if you have an extra connector, you'll need three pieces. And if you only have the three pin fan connector, you'll only need two pieces. The size I've found that works the best is about a third of an inch to a half inch in length. Once your heat shrink is on and ready like mine, you can grab your connectors and measure out how close you can get the heat shrink without interfering with the connector itself. Usually my heat shrink is about one or two millimeters ahead of my paracord. This is so that it hugs the paracord close to the wire as well as the heat shrink itself hugging close to the wire at the end so that it doesn't slide off as easy. And once you're comfortable with the position of the heat shrink, you can start to heat it up with either your lighter or your other heat source and then move on to getting the connectors plugged back in. Now when you hook your connectors up, you're going to want to grab your diagram and a tweezers or something to bend the pins back into place so that they snap into their little holes and keep everything from falling out. For the three pin fan wire, you might have to use something a little extra to push one or two of the wires in if it's not going in on its own because it's going to be pretty stiff after putting the heat shrink on it. And for the Molex connector, you can just slide that back in there the way you took it out. I actually was able to slide my heat shrink up a little bit so that I could get both the wires back into their little holes and then put that little plastic latch back on and hear it click and you're good to go. Now on to the Arctic F12 PWM fan. Once again I'll start by sketching the connectors so that I make sure I remember where my wires go and then we'll take a look at the two connectors on this fan. Now on your screen is the worst most annoying connector in all of computer fans. The pins for the wire are completely internal, which means that you have to get something like a precision tweezers or a small needle to even be able to hit the pin and be careful not to stab yourself. Speaking of the pin, here is that wire connection with the pin facing in the downward position. And then here is the top view of that same connector. You should note the orientation of the notch at the end of the connector. This will help you remember what side the pin is on. And finally, here is the fully assembled connector, just in case you need it for a reference photo. Now moving on to the 4-pin fan connector. Oh look, it's exactly like the 3-pin connector. You can see this connector's pin jutting out at the bottom, and you will see those pins in these four holes on the connector. 
Now it's time to watch me struggle with this horrible piece of technology first. What you'll want to do to get the pin in this power sharing connector is push the wire from behind while using your tool to try to get the pin and knock it down while it's not stuck on plastic. And after I struggle for a bit to finally get them all out, we can move on to the four pin fan connector. Once again, you'll want to push the wire slightly forward so that the pin is loose and not stuck on plastic. And if you're lucky, you'll be able to get all of them with this tool here. Otherwise, you will have to push down on each pin individually and get each wire out by themselves. Now that I have it fully disassembled, I'm going to measure my wire. I usually measure from the edge of the fan to where the metal part starts. And also, don't forget to measure the short distance between the fan connection and the power sharing connection. Once you have this done, you can take out your paracord and measure it and then cut it. You want a clean cut with either a scissors or a sharp instrument. Now we remove the white string inside of the paracord. And for a final preparation on the paracord, I like to tap on the end of it to open it up a bit so that you have a nice big opening. And then use your lighter to melt it a bit so that it doesn't fray on the end. Now we're ready to work the wire through the cord. You can see I'm peeling apart some of the glue that's holding these wires together so that I can put them in there individually and not clog up the opening or make them bunch up. Now I'm going to slow this down here for a moment because this is very important that you don't get these cords bunched up. If they aren't separated enough, you're going to end up getting them stuck, and if you pull back on these cords, they're going to have the pin get stuck inside of the paracord, and then you're going to have to tear the paracord out and remeasure and get ready to do that all over again. So basically, if you don't take your time on this, you're going to have a bad time. Now we'll speed through the rest of this cinching process as I get my wires all the way through my paracord. And then I'll cinch on my little piece of paracord for in between my connectors. And finally, we're at the heat shrinking process. What you're gonna need is five millimeter heat shrink. I have three pieces, one for each end of the paracord. I usually cut my heat shrink down to pieces that are about a third to a half inch. And now we will work all those heat shrink pieces into their respective places that we need on the end of the paracord. And when you have all your heat shrink relatively in position, you're going to want to grab your connectors. And what you'll be using those for is to measure kind of the distance that you can get the wire and the paracord into the connector with all the pins without it bunching up and making it impossible for the pins to click back into place. You can see here that I'm going to use the connector and figure out where the metal piece is going to be. And I'll shift my heat shrink onto about where I think it'll tap up against the plastic on the connector. And then I usually cinch back the paracord just a little distance. This is so that the heat shrink will close down on the wire and also close down on the paracord, keeping it decently snug. So when you have your heat shrink situated in its final resting place, you can grab your heat source, I have a lighter in this video, and heat it up and close it up, which we will zoom through here, and then we'll move on over to the getting the wires plugged back in. Now you can see with all my heat shrink settled, I've gotten my diagram back out, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make sure that I pull up the pins gently, so that it's not to break them, but so that they jut out and are able to go back in their little holes and keep the wire from falling out. I use my little iFixit tweezer set, which is great for this purpose, and then you're going to use your diagram to plug your wires back into where they should go. That should be pretty self-explanatory. Now if you need to refer back to the photos, there should be links in the description so that you can see where the pins are and the holes that I'm talking about are. And when you finally get everything plugged back in where it should be according to your diagram, you're good and you've successfully sleeved what's one of the more difficult fans to sleeve. You can see my end result here looks pretty nice and it looks like it could have came right out of the box from the factory. Thank you guys and gals for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If there was anything that was unclear or that you guys think I could improve on this video, go ahead and leave a comment. If this video helped you uh, sleeve your fans, then go ahead and give me a like. And expect more of this type of content to be coming your way because I've got a complete sleeving guide that I'm working on. Uh, it's probably going to be released in video increments for each type of cable because otherwise it's going to be like an hour long. So you got that to look forward to. So happy sleeving and I'll see you all in the next video.